much needed. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Lent. I have a question for you as we begin. Like, um, How exhausted are you? How, what's your energy level? Most people I talk to these days are saying, boy, I am just so tired. I have no energy whatsoever. And I totally see where they're coming from. Because I have to admit my energy levels haven't been great. But one of the things that give me strength is coming and worshiping with you. The Zoom worship gatherings have been wonderful to see people's faces and interact and that sort of stuff. But also making these worship times for you is also a sort of source of strength for me as it helps me focus on the source that brings us life. It helps me center back to who I am. And remember that I am not defined by what I create, but by who I am. And hope the same is true for you as we gather in Jesus' name during this time, this ongoing, this lingering time, this stuck in Lent time, this COVID time, but knowing that Easter is coming still. Let us begin our time together with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Compassionate and merciful God, we call upon you this day with wonder at the extent of your love, grateful for your presence with us in our daily living. We come knowing you welcome us as we are, persons who know good and bad influences, effects and choices. We come desiring to be closer to you. We ask that you answer us and help us to walk closer with you. Bless our worship and our prayer and our song, that you may be glorified and that we may be strengthened. We ask this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel according to Mark, the 8th chapter. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the growth that we see in the world around us, for how you arrange things so that life produces life and everything has its place, its purpose, and its season. Prune and clip us as you desire. Bring our hearts and our minds into the place where they should be. Help us value what you value and do 
what you want us to do. And we thank you, O God, for the love that we see in the world around us, for the mercy and the grace we experience from your hand, for the chances you grant us to begin anew, for the people you have sent to us, those who love and care for us. Help us to grow in faith, O God, and produce the fruit of goodness, and so be a blessing to you and to your world. You expect us, O God, to be a forgiving and loving people, a people who care for the afflicted and the oppressed, a church that seeks the lost and works to bring hope to those who despair. You ask us to speak truth with compassion, to give to those who are in need, to pray for those who are our enemies, and to bless those who are strangers to us. Show us, O God, the work you have for us to do today, the acts we should perform, the people we should see or call, and the prayers that we should pray. And we pray for our friends, our neighbors, our siblings in Christ at St. Martin's Anglican Church as they say goodbye to their rector, Reverend Natasha Brubaker that Reverend Natasha will find new and meaningful ministry opportunities that will honor her gifts and her spirit, and that this will be a time of renewal and discernment for this congregation. May you bless both of their futures. And speak to us, O oh God, even as we speak to you. Take the burdens of our hearts from us and put in their place your peace and your guiding word. Hear our prayers for those for whom we hold before you in our hearts and upon our lips. And so we pray for Roy, for Becky, for Jacqueline, for Ryan, for Sean, for Graham, for Bill, for Art, for Don, for George, for Paige, for Tricia, for Andrew, for Tom, for Leela for Leon, for Laura, for Genesis, for Matthew, for Laura, for Stephanie, for Vicky, for Celine, for Richard, for Adam, for Joanne, for Rebecca, for Brenda, for Brooklyn, for Darlene, for Joe, for Wayne, for Brad, for Kalung, for Larry, for Bob, for Thomas, that you will bring them the healing that only you can provide. We thank you for all of this, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit guide your days and your deeds in peace. Amen. <laughs>